Okay, let's resume. Sergeant Adams, please invite the witness to come in. Thank you. Denison. Good afternoon, Ms. Lim. Yeah, afternoon, Mr. <coughs> um, just now before the before our short break, um, a question was put to you by Mr. Tong about <coughs> the WhatsApp message of eight August. Um, where <coughs> Ms. Rai uh sent a message, just to jog your memory, sent a message uh, in a group chat thread to a, her volunteers, uh, Mr. Yudhishra Nathan and um, Ms. Lo Peng Ying. And you were asked about a particular statement in this um, WhatsApp chat. Maybe, maybe you could just put the WhatsApp chat uh, in front of you. It's at, yes, uh, I have it. Thank you. It's at 12.41 p.m. on 8th of August. Yes. <clears throat> so you would have seen that in the chat itself, the message itself, <clears throat> um, in, on the, the third sentence... She said that I told them what I told you guys and they've agreed and the best thing to do is to take the information to the grave, okay? Yes. Miss <clears throat> um, Lim, I think it's quite public knowledge that you were ex-police officer. I suppose it is. How many years did you serve in the police force? Not long, three years. <laughs> Sorry? About three years. Three years, thank you. Um, given that you're former police officers and uh, knowing that police do keep their records uh, very carefully. And of course, we know that there will always be the presence of CCTV footage outside police stations. Um, in, your, uh, in your view, do you think that um, agreeing to do something like taking the lie that Ms Khan said in Parliament on the 3rd of uh, August uh, to bring the information to the grave as in her message, would be something plausible as a police ex police officer. Uh, I'm not sure what you're asking me, Mr. Tan, actually, but um, we never told Ms. Khan any such thing. Mm. And um, what we know from the news, of course, is that uh, after the statement was made on 3rd of August that the police were looking into the matter, so I would assume that you know they would dig up all necessary evidence to try to. Uh, confirm or, or disconfirm what was said? My question is actually that given that, that you are an ex-police officer and you know the, our Singapore police force better than those who have not served in it, <laughs> would this be 
Uh, would it be even be possible to hide such information for long? Even that, I'm, even that I suppose it's records. unlikely. It's unlikely. Yeah. Uh, Ms. Lim, I, also want to, I would also like to ask you, in the course of dealing with Ms. Khan, um, including in the, the couple of months between August, 3rd of August and to her eventual resignation, <clears throat> um, what is your knowledge of her mental state of mind or does she, does she uh, suffer from any mental condition, to your knowledge? Uh Actually, I got to understand her much more, I felt, uh, during the time when we were conducting the disciplinary panel uh, work because we had um, to interact with her, uh, both in dealing with her responses uh, as well as two uh, interviews that we conducted with her. Uh, and she submitted, as part of the disciplinary uh, panel response, she submitted documents from a psychotherapist uh, saying that um, she um, requires uh, some therapy to stabilize herself. I, I, I need to look at the document to be very accurate in, in quoting that. So may I see the document? This, uh, which document is this? Uh, her reply uh, to the disciplinary panel uh, uh, invitation for an explanation. Okay, so in one of her submissions, hey, this is different. Oh, it was from a clinic. Uh, <clears throat> I'm not sure whether I should read it out actually because it's medical information, but um, it was mentioned that she has got certain uh, uh, symptoms of uh, PTSD uh, and that she um, is undergoing some therapy to try to overcome that. Uh, in the course of our interviews with her, and perhaps um, I may refer to my notes. Uh, Whose documents are these? Okay, this one was actually the reply, uh, the response by Ms. Khan to, to the disciplinary panel, which is submitted by email on the 4th of um, November. So it's one of the attachments. Okay. Yeah. So it's her document in that sense, yeah. Yes, Ms. Lim, you were going on to mention uh, something. Yes, so so um, in the course of the our work uh, in the DP, besides her own uh, tendering of, of, in that sense, medical documents to the fact that um, she may have some mental health um, I issues, uh, during the, the course of our interviews with her as well, um, we did find that it could be stress-related. I, 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 I don't want to judge anything, but the fact is that during our interviews with her, um, she was actually extremely fragile and uh, emotional. And uh, I think I did tender my notes, typewritten notes to the staff to tender to the committee during the break. Um, Would you like to refer to your notes? Yes. Okay, um, if I can refer the committee then to the first interview that we did with her on the 8th of November. Are, are these your documents? These are my typewritten notes, uh, which... Perhaps would you like to submit it to me to take a look, and then we can uh, circulate oh, it as Oh, I'm well. sorry. I forgot to do that. So the original, is it? The original, is it? The one you make copies just now, this one, and the junior. Uh, yeah, this one is later. Oh, then just show speaker all. And, and, um, and sorry.
I think with regards to some of the mental health concerns, um, perhaps just exercise your judgment as to what needs to be shared or not. Sure. If possible. Okay, uh, so I'll just try to stick to the facts as, as we observe them rather than any um, diagnosis or s such matters. Okay, so uh, if I could refer the, the panel to the uh, first interview, my notes anyway, of the first interview we had with her on the 8th of November. Does the, does the, does the committee have the notes? I just ask one question. Ms Lim, these were notes taken contemporaneously at the DP meeting itself? Uh, those are my notes, yes. Okay. They were handwritten and then subsequently uh, Yes, so, so the handwritten okay. ones, actually, I, I should tender to the that's committee fine, to compare. I just want to know whether these were prepared contemporaneously. Contemporaneously, the... yes. yes. Okay, thank you. And I uh, believe that the others may have submitted to you also their notes, I, I, I suppose so. Ms Carol? Yes, okay. Uh, so to answer the question of, um, uh, I guess, her thought processes, I, I just put it that way. Um, so the committee started off on the 8th of November by asking us certain questions on how the um, untruth came to be in the speech in the first place, right? And um, and it was put to her um, by Mr. Singh that, that actually he had written on the draft that she needed to substantiate that paragraph. And she, she said her response was that she did not process the gravity of that. And she thought that it was enough that she believed that the anecdote was true. And then um, she was subsequently asked, what about the part about following the victim to the police station? She said she did not process it properly. You know, and then, of course, um, <clears throat> we started to ask her why the draft was put up so late and so on and so forth. And, and you know, um, we started to look into, in a sense, the root causes of why such an such a, a incident happened. All right. Uh, basically, um, she ignored or was not able to appreciate the SG's uh, advice to her um, and uh, continued with it anyway. Okay, so, so to us, that was something of concern because um, how likely is that to happen in the future uh, if such a thing can happen this time? Uh, and, and we also noted that um, she, she, she was saying that uh, further down the page that um, because of her age, um, she has imposter syndrome and that she uh, will not speak unless she's very sure of something. So we also noted from that that she was trying to attribute her actions to her age. Okay, and then uh, over the page, uh, we did ask her some questions about um, the fact that, uh, you know, she, since she says that she's in a psychiatric, I mean, not psychiatric, so has some psychological needs, that uh, it was important for her to address those issues. So, um, and, and, and to ask what she had been doing to address those issues. And we noted that the documents that she submitted to us were actually uh, of a therapist that she had seen in October 2021. So our question was, what about the therapist that you saw prior to that? Why are they not producing reports? And it's only this most recent one that's producing a report to say that she shows symptoms of PTSD. Um, and, and finally, we also tried to ask her why she feels she needs to, to stay on, and that will be at the last page of, of my typewritten notes. Uh, she says she can understand why some people think that she should resign, but if she does not show that she can turn the matter around and contribute, there will be repercussions on her personally and also how people view minority women. All right, so that is her, her thinking. Now, um, if I can move on to the... Uh, second interview that we did with her, which was on 29th of November. First of all, throughout this interview, she was crying uh, most of the time. Uh, I, I can imagine that she's under a lot of stress, but this was the fact. And um, she started to the meeting, but she called for the meeting, actually, the second meeting. So she tried to talk about the work that she had been doing uh, as an MP on the ground and so on. And if you look at the second page, I mean, we the committee actually wanted to s come back to the main issue. To, and, and therefore, that was why on the second page, we asked her near the top there, why, why was she bringing all this up? And she said that she had to build her confidence and so on. Okay, so uh, we then 
after she finished what she wanted to tell us, we then went into clarifications again to, to find out again more about the incident and what caused the incident on the 3rd of August to happen. So um, she said that she was asked, I mean, the original draft that she put up of that speech, which was, I think, two days before the, the, the motion itself, that anecdote was not in the first draft. And then her explanation was that she was dissociated and she did not realise what she was doing and, and she had gone for therapy. So that was a, a worrying to us because what she was basically saying, as far as we could understand it, was that she was doing things without thinking about what she was doing. Uh, then later on, when we went further down the page, on page two, I asked the question whether she has ever accompanied any victims to the police in Singapore because that part to me was not very clear because she had said that she had not accompanied that victim that she, the anecdote was about, but asked her whether she had accompanied any victims to the police in Singapore. And her answer was, I didn't go with them inside, but I dropped them off. And then they were my friends. And then she went on to say, but this didn't happen in Singapore, but I've done it in Australia. You know, So we were trying to grapple with really what, she, what was the truth you know, as far as this whole episode was concerned. We were very unclear. Uh, the other issue which, which cropped up, I think, during this uh, second interview to me was that she appeared to um, not be very careful about the things that she was doing in general. So, for example, she had uh, apparently among her teammates talked about the fact that uh, she should not leave the team because if she left, there would be a by-election triggered. And... Uh, I asked her how she came to that conclusion. She said she was informed by someone that this was the case. And I asked her whether she had checked. And she said she had checked. And, she ch and her checking revealed that the Prime Minister can decide whether a vacancy in a GRC would trigger a by-election. So uh, we all know the law on this is quite clear. And this also raised alarm bells with me because, I mean, I think as an MP, you would be expected to check such a thing before perhaps believing what people tell you or, or you know, at least do your research. So, so this, this was another uh, area of concern. I wasn't sure of her ability to actually exercise due diligence to check matters and so on. So um, she continued. Uh, uh, and the, the, subsequently, the, uh, the part that follows is actually questions about whether she had wanted to, to resign as an MP or to resign as a CC member earlier on. And... Um, Initially, she said that she had uh, not told anyone that, but it, later on, upon further questioning, it, it emerged that she agreed that she had actually drafted some um, messages uh, earlier on intending to, uh, wanting to resign for one reason or another. You know, so um, this was another cause of concern. Um, Mr. Singh highlighted to her that she had messaged him on the 4th of August to ask whether she has a future in the party. So, so... In that sense, in terms of emotional stability, we felt that there were causes for concern on our side. Um, finally, towards the end of the uh, interview, pages five and six, I uh, just touched base very briefly with her uh, on whether the, at that time the Committee of Privileges had contacted her uh, and whether she was making any preparations for the committee. So she said that the committee had not contacted her at that point, which was, I think, 29 of November, had not contacted her at that point, but she was preparing for the COP. Her lawyer was going through the matter with her. Uh, and, la and last of all, from these notes, I'd like to also highlight um, on the last page, page six, that, and this concerns the 3rd of October meeting, which I wasn't present at, between uh, Mr. Singh and, and her. Uh, and the question was put, to her by Mr. Singh as follows. It says, before the October session, I met you and I told you that it was your call. Did the need to tell the truth in Parliament occur to you? And her response was, yes, but I was consumed with guilt in my own experience and I thought that it wouldn't come up. That's her response. She, she was consumed with guilt in her own experience and she thought that it wouldn't come up. And uh, Mr. Singh says to her, you can't lie, right? And then she says, yes. So, I mean, as far as the 3rd of October meeting, I was not there, but that was her response. 
to the disciplinary panel when asked why she didn't tell the truth before uh, at the October sitting. She said she was consumed with guilt in her own experience. That was what she, she noted. I may just ask a quick question since yeah. you raised this. Uh, in that last page you mentioned about regarding the conversation on 3rd October, on the top uh, where Mr. Pritam Singh said before October session, I met you and told you it was your call. Right. So meaning that it was really up to her to decide what to do. I don't know the context, but he phrased it in this way. From, yeah. from this, it would seem to be that uh, it's really for her to decide, which is, I she guess, has to decide, yeah. if you follow from this, when he said that I will not judge you, is that you decide what you want to do, I will not judge you for that. Would that be a fair interpretation? I wasn't, you yeah, I, I wasn't. I know you were not there. Yeah, I wasn't there. But so say that as from what he's recounted here, as you recorded, and what we know now of what had been said specifically, this would be a reasonable interpretation of it? Chairman, Chairman, I think it would be fair to put to her that that line comes from which witness? Oh, because there's differing... Came, uh, that, that line came from Mr. Pritam Singh himself, who said to take ownership and responsibility. I will not judge you. If you... Yeah, so... In, so in, I'm just in, asking in the, in based the, on what Mr. Pritam Singh has shared, and given what he said now here... Would that be a reasonable interpretation that it was really left to her uh, to decide? Well, I mean, I, I, I don't know what he said because I put myself on a news block out for the last Understand. few days. Um, but in any case, I mean, the it is recorded line, as it is recorded. You, yes. The specific line he said was to take uh, ownership and responsibility yes. and I will not judge you. So these few lines came out across clearly as is what he conveyed. Okay. And I'm just asking you that based on what you've recounted here, um, it would suggest that the option was left to Ms Khan to decide. What I, th I think it also has to be looked at the whole context because, you know, what we recorded here was that I told you it was your call. Did the need to tell the truth in Parliament occur to you? Then she says, yes, but I was consumed with guilt and own experience and I thought it wouldn't come up. Now, of course, she's saying... She's not saying here, you gave me a choice, so I made that choice. She says, I was consumed with guilt and own experience and I thought it wouldn't come up. And he says, but you can't lie, right? And she says, yes. So it has been taken, I think, in totality to understand. Like I said, I wasn't there, but this is what I, I recorded. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> thank you, Ms. Lim. Uh, thank you, Ms. Lim, for recounting <clears throat> what uh, was shared to you <clears throat> by Ms. Khan and your own understanding of her <clears throat> mental condition. Um, I just um, I have one follow-up question on that. Um, you will recall that before the break that you dispute that uh, Ms. Sun's statement to Ms. Lowe and Ms. Na Mr. Naden in, his, in her WhatsApp message on 8 August that uh, the three of you, namely you, uh, Mr. Singh and Mr. Faisal, agreed, <coughs> that, uh, agreed with her that the, uh, they should take the information to the grave, right? So, uh, having, having known of, uh, given your understanding of her mental condition, in, in, including dissociation, would you rule out that any of her mental condition could have caused her to make this statement in her WhatsApp message? I, I can't rule, rule anything out, yeah. Um, Ms Lim, is there anything else you would like to tell the committee? Uh, just, just also to share one more document which I think um, the staff have provided uh, that the committee did follow up on the uh, response that Ms Khan gave to us when we wrote to her on the 2nd of November on the 4th of November she replied she gave some attachments and we did follow up um, on one important piece of information which was that um, she said because we had asked her specifically about the women's survivor group that she attended and whether she could give us any information about this group. And, and our reason for asking that is we wanted to ascertain whether what she had said was untrue only with regard to the part of accompanying the victim to the police or was it the case that the anecdote itself, her having heard it in a women's survivor group, was that part true or not? We wanted to verify that as far as we could. So based on the reply that was uh, sent to us, we did contact the person who was supposed to have um, uh, been a key organiser of those groups. And I spoke with this person on the phone on the 6th of November. Uh, and I confirmed what she told me by email. Uh, and, and the confirmation is this that this person could confirm that she saw Ms. Han there at these sessions that were organised by this group. She saw Ms. Han there in 2018 and 2019. 
But the anecdote itself as to whether it was the case that the survivor uh, shared that anecdote in the, in the session, this lady was not able to confirm uh, because um, she said that there were too many stories and too many sessions and it happened some time ago, so she was unable to confirm that part of it. So uh, our conclusion from this is that um, we should give her the benefit of the doubt because verification at least that she attended these sessions. Of course, what is shared in the sessions is confidential, so our ability to check further on this point, I think, would come to an end. Thank you, Ms. Nee. Any other questions? Mr. Tong. The notes that are provided, I would be grateful yes. if... Sorry. I will be grateful if Ms. Lim could make available the actual contemporaneous handwritten ones. Sure, sure. Thank I'll be happy. That's fine. Any other questions, anyone? Just one, just one question. The, the notes that Ms. Lim had taken us through as you recorded it, uh, do you recall that this is as close as possible the w words used by the individuals who, whom you recorded the statements? Uh, I tried my best to do it in a QA and a form. Yes, I noticed um, that. Yeah. So it seems to suggest that it's as far as you as can far as, as possible, yes, as far as possible, as close as possible. Yeah. Right, thank you. Thank you. So may I provide the original, yes, I mean the, the handwritten yes, notes? Yes, please. Thank you very much. If there are no other further questions for now. We would like to thank you, Ms. Lim, for coming before the committee. Transcript of the proceedings will be shared with you for verification. So do go through it. And if you have any other minor amendments, do make changes and send the transcripts back to us. Uh, do note that the transcripts and any evidence given to the committee are not to be disclosed to anyone or published and must be kept strictly confidential until the committee has presented the relevant report to Parliament. You may withdraw uh, from Parliament. Uh, we, I don't think we will be calling you back later today, but should there be a need, we will uh, let you know. Uh, do also provide us with any documents uh, corroborating some of the points you have made, conversations you have had with your fellow team members, etc., or anybody else with regards to the particular sure. issue. Uh, there being no other matters, our staff will accompany you out to the waiting room. Thank you very much. Thank you. Sergeant Adams, please accompany the witness out. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.